Locking up your wheels, or skidding as it's commonly known, has been part of riding a bike, well, ever since brakes were invented. This is not to be confused with drifting, which the skid snobs will probably tell you does not involve the use of brakes, but ultimately is your wheels sliding against the surface. But let's leave alone style for a minute and the fact that skidding wears out tires and washes out trails, and because a front or rear wheel which has broken traction means a certain loss of grip and control of your bike, which isn't really a good idea. Enter ABS braking for mountain biking from Bosch, the world's largest automobile supplier. We actually need to reference cars to put all this into perspective. Let's face it, most of us nowadays have probably got ABS braking on the cars we drive. In fact, ABS was introduced to cars in the year I was born, 1966, but it was actually invented by Gabriella Voisin in 1929. But in 2004, ABS became legal on all production cars. They didn't know that, did you? Well, let's just rephrase that. It actually became a legal requirement on cars. And whilst there's certainly nothing illegal about ABS, what do we actually know about ABS on bikes? What some of you might know is actually that Bosch did introduce ABS to bicycles back in 2017, but that did actually involve a hefty bit of hardware. No, for mountain bikes, not until now. And I have to thank Bosch so much for giving us this bike to try out the new system and also to see that actually EMTB really is at the forefront of where all the new cool technology is taking place. Of course, it's no secret that many people have indeed made skidding and drifting an art. And whilst Bosch probably might not want me to say it, well, it can really be good fun. Until that is, you start sliding the front wheel out of control with steep banks either side of you. But hey, you try locking up a good ABS car and it's virtually impossible. They'll probably like me saying that, that's for sure. And that's because some ABS systems can apply or release braking pressure up to 15 times per second. Impressive stuff. So what most of us actually want is good posture. We certainly don't want panic posture, which inevitably happens when that front wheel locks up. So uh, I'm really excited and it's a pleasure to introduce you guys to ABS, anti-skid or anti-front wheel lockup from Bosch. And what I can say, it is really simple to set up. It's easy to understand and also it is super intuitive. First up then, let's have a look at what it looks like, what it is, how it operates, before actually getting out on the trail and seeing just how it functions. So first up on the handlebar is the lever. It's a traditional lever and um, I have to say, it's a really nice shape and size. It's got a barrel adjuster here. Uh, obviously it's made by Magura based on the logos on there. And we've also got an ABS stop, which is on the left hand, which you can see there. The hoses from lever to brake are the same on front and back, no change from normal. However, if you look up front, there is a separate disc mounted to the normal disc and a sensor. That sensor has a lead which takes us to a box mounted on the fork leg. That in turn has a lead which runs out of it and links into the rear brake, which has a similar setup to the front, sensor and disc. Now first up, it's important to understand there's already a strong brake on this bike, but you can actually ride it with the ABS off. And as you can see, it skids. So as you can see, even on moderately damp terrain, which is pretty flat, there is the tendency for that front wheel to brake traction. What I'm gonna do now is set the bike into a ABS mode. Now on this Mondraker bike, there's two ABS modes. There's an all road mode and a trail mode. So clearly it's the trail mode I'm gonna demonstrate next. 
I mean, it's, it's already very, very noticeable. But folks, I actually took the bike out a few days ago, actually I've taken it out for many days, to check out how the bike works in a range of different scenarios. There's a totally natural feeling when you're riding the ABS. It doesn't feel weird in the slightest. What's quite interesting is that I think you could quite quickly get really used to and dependent on ABS. Well, hold on a minute. Yeah, that is what you think it is. That is probably the most control I've ever had going down there. What's quite interesting, the Bosch guys told me to do a little test off the back of the bike. Ooh, a bit nervous. Wow. So the front wheel keeps going. And then to do one with your weight centralized. Oh my God, it's like night and day how quickly that it reacts and brings you to a stop under control. I gotta say, it's crazy. One of the most important parts to understand about ABS is how it allows you to focus on the trail and not how much pressure you're putting into your brake levers. It has a massive positive impact on your flow, on your control and poise on a bike. Bosch ABS really is a significant technological development. So as you can probably tell, I'm actually getting to grips with just why ABS is important. But the Bosch line is that they say that ABS is said to allow you to brake safer and more confidently with both brakes at the same time. It counteracts the tendency for the front wheel to lock or slip, and it's said to work effectively even during spontaneous braking regardless of surface. And even including gravel, which many people frequently ride on bike parks. But not only bike parks and trail center surfaces, a lot of people ride on forest tracks such as these where there's lots of gravel. It's actually quite difficult to stop. So what I've done now, I've switched from trail ABS to all road ABS. It's a different kind of setting and I'm gonna demonstrate just how it works. So as you can see, that is, uh, not quite as strong a braking uh, performance as there is in trail mode, yet nevertheless, it does slow you up without skidding or getting that front wheel diving out of control. So there is actually a skill involved in this and it requires you trusting that the ABS is gonna work. So body position is key, as I'll demonstrate now. <laughs> wow. Now, as you can see, uh, I went into straightforward panic mode, which is what you tend to do when you, when you haul on the front anchor on a, on, a, on a surface such as that. But because I was over the back, that front wheel really doesn't want to allow you to stop. So that's why it's important to understand you need to trust ABS because as I showed you in the previous example, it really, really will slow you down in a controlled way. Now what I demonstrated there was several things. The first thing was the fact that ABS all road is less powerful than ABS trail. What you might have noticed was actually the stopping distance was actually very different between the two. It was actually double uh, in the first version. And the reason for that is that my first reaction was my traditional reaction to a front wheel skid. I get my weight over the back of the bike and it simply made the braking distance actually quite a long way. Whereas when I trusted that ABS would work, my body position was more central and that meant more pressure on the front tire, which led to a far shorter braking distance. You might be wondering how ABS works. Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. And in simple terms, the sensors actually measure the wheel speed and also the pressure that's been put through the brakes. Therefore, uh, it, we have different types of ABS. We've got ABS for cargo, touring, and the two versions which we're looking at today, which is all road and of course, ABS trail. Yeah. 
In effect, the sensors are measuring the speed of the front wheel and the rear wheel and compare it to the real ground speed of the bike. Now, when the speed of the rear or front wheel changes, the algorithm can understand from the delta of the change which event is happening, lock or slip. And that all happens within three to four milliseconds. That's certainly faster than my reactions, that's for sure. Now there is a difference between the front and rear of the bike. So the wheel speed is measured by sensors. Now up front, if the system anticipates a front wheel lock, the ABS will regulate the brake pressure and therefore improve the stability and steerability. Yes, that's a new word for me, steerability of the bike. And as you can imagine, on super wet ground or gravel, or indeed the steeper terrain which I was riding earlier, that brake of traction really does compromise your control. Guys, we only had a short time of riding ABS, and what I can tell you, in that time, I really have got acquainted to riding it very, very quickly, and I'm gonna find it difficult to head back to uh, the traditional setup. Now, obviously, all of us brake or skid intentionally or unintentionally. We see skid marks on steep banks, in trail center, in bike park. A very cool feature is that all ABS statistical data can be seen in the Kiox 300 display, including the last braking distance and braking time of the last braking. A fantastic way then to understand and improve your riding technique. So that's it, fantastic time riding steep, horrible conditions on the bike. A couple of more questions from uh, you guys. Uh, how much does it weigh? The weight of the Bosch ABS system is approximately 227 grams, including the cover and the screws on top of the standard Magura parts. That's very little extra for so much performance advantage. Can you actually buy it aftermarket? No, you can't. ABS only comes as bikes OE. And on that note, we are about to head over to Eurobike to see some of the examples of Bosch ABS e-mounted bikes on the market. So join us from Frankfurt in the next few days where we'll take a look at uh, the ABS bikes on the market. Thanks for joining us. Please uh, subscribe to EMBN for lots of e-mounted bike content, whether it be adventures or indeed tech or skills or maintenance. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, and yeah, we'll see you uh, in the halls of Frankfurt.